There are so many wonders in the acknowledgement of this world that are beyond our thoughts. The theories of science, logic, and medicine do not coincide with miracles, but certain things leave us speechless. Like the story of a struggling newborn improved dramatically after being placed in an incubator with their healthy twin sister. In this video, we really want to share with you the true life story of rescuing Hug. Did you know about the case of this miracle Hug? If not, then watch on to the very end and discover a bonus video. Also, if you've not done so already, please subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell to get inspired by these real life stories every day. Now, back to the story. The story begins with the first week of the life of a set of twins. Apparently, each was in their respective incubators, and one was not expected to live for long. A hospital nurse went against hospital rules and placed the babies in one incubator. When they were placed together, the healthier of the two threw an arm over her sister in an endearing embrace. The smaller baby's heart rate stabilized and her temperature rose to normal. As made up as it sounds, the above referenced is a true story, at least in its broad strokes. Heidi and Paul Jackson's twin girls, Brielle and Kyrie, were born on October 17, 1995, 12 weeks ahead of their due date. Standard hospital practice is to place preemie twins in separate incubators to reduce the risk of infection. That was done for the Jackson girls in the neonatal intensive care unit at the Medical Center of Central Massachusetts in Worcester. Kyrie, the larger sister at 2 pounds 3 ounces, quickly began gaining weight and calmly sleeping her newborn days away. But Brielle, who weighed only 2 pounds at birth, couldn't keep up with her. She had breathing and heart rate problems. The oxygen level in her blood would dip, and her weight gain was slow. In an interview with their dad, Paul Jackson said, The nurses in the NICU were very honest, and they told me up front, things look pretty good now, but the next 42 to 78 hours, things could turn very quickly. Though Kyrie was put on a bit of a weight in the days following her arrival, Brielle was not doing so well. She cried a great deal, leaving her gasping and blue-faced. Her heart rate was way up. She got the hiccups and dangerous sign that her body was under stress. Her parents watched, terrified that she might die. The NICU, or Neonatal Intensive Care Unit, nurse Gail Kasparian tried everything to calm her. She held her, she had her dad hold her, she wrapped her in a blanket, she suctioned her nose, she tried everything she knew to stabilize Brielle, but nothing she tried proved effective. Then, she remembered hearing about a procedure done in Europe. It was a procedure that called for double bedding of multiple birth babies, especially preemies. Though the procedure she wanted to undertake was unorthodox, with her supervisor not around and the consent of the Jacksons, she did it anyway. She put Brielle in the incubator with her sister Kyrie. Almost immediately, Brielle snuggled up to Kyrie. Her blood oxygen saturation levels, which had been frighteningly low, soared. She began to breathe more easily. The frantic crying stopped and her normal pinkish color quickly returned. Over the next weeks, her health improved steadily in her new, less lonely quarters. Kasparian said in an interview, When I put Brielle in with her sister, it was amazing. She immediately calmed down, her heart rate stabilized, and her color changed. Although it's impossible to say whether Brielle's recovery was wholly or primarily due to the healing touch of her twin sister, she did improve considerably after Kyrie was placed in the incubator with her. The children survived their rocky beginning and in time went home with their mother and their father. But the media attention brought about by their story and the now famous photograph prompted their parents, Heidi and Paul Jackson of Westminster, to change their telephone number. The Jackson girls made history at Memorial. It was the first time the hospital had attempted such a thing, and Gail Kasparian was praised for her common sense, which led to saving the baby girl. According to the hospital, the first co-bedding of twins occurred as an innovation from a staff nurse, Gail Kasparian. Another method used to stabilize preemies is kangaroo care, a term for prolonged skin-to-skin -skin contact with parents and other caregivers. The technique, so named because of its resemblance to the way pouched animals care for their young, involves skin-to-skin -skin contact between parent and baby. Often the child, wearing only a diaper and covered by a blanket, is placed against the parent's bare chest. The method is especially effective with premature babies who are extremely fragile and have almost tissue-thin skin when born. Proponents say the method can have an amazing effect, a steadier heart rate, better breathing, greater contentment, and deeper sleep. Everybody in the world knows you can take a crying baby and pick him up and he'll stop crying. Susan Ludenton, professor of maternal and child health nursing at the University of Maryland at Baltimore says, You put him down, he starts crying again. 
these babies give us the message quite clearly that they prefer to be held. Now we're just finding out that when they are held, there are all these tremendous physiological benefits. Now Brielle and Kyrie are nearing their late 20s and their story is still known to this day as the hug that helped change medicine. Nothing can explain the powerful love radiating between these twin baby sisters who were born prematurely. Their love is so powerful that a warm touch and hug from the sister is enough to give her twin a full chance of life. And since then, the picture of Kyrie hugging Brielle went to be known as Rescuing Hug. And after this case, many hospitals adopted the way of co-bedding premature twins, triplets, and quads. For example, the University of Massachusetts Memorial went on with path-breaking concept in medicine and co-bedded at least 100 sets of multiple premature babies. And what is more surprising is that over a period of years, they never ever found the case of infection among twins. Later researchers came up to the conclusion that premature twins co-bedding have a good number of health benefits. What do you think about the magical but real experience of these babies? Do you too know some interesting facts just like Rescuing Hug that help to change science and medicine field? Then don't forget to comment down below. Another true life story about the Rescuing Hug is that of Ava and Austin Jason. Premature twins, Ava and Austin Jason, too, have a story that defies logic and science. Born at 27 weeks, neither of them was breathing and they were placed in incubators after they were resuscitated. They began life with a struggle. But the bond between twins Ava and Austin Jason saw them through. Luke Jason and her husband Luke Jason, 33, had been overjoyed to discover she was pregnant with twins. The pregnancy was a normal one without any complications until her water broke 13 weeks early and Lake had to be rushed for an emergency cesarean. Since the twins were premature, both were still underweight, weak, and struggling to breathe. Ava weighed just 2 pounds 1 ounce and her brother was 30 ounces heavier when they were instantly given urgent life-saving treatment. They were resuscitated and placed in incubators, but both were struggling at first. When I finally got to see them 11 hours later, they were on separate sides of the room. Their skin looked transparent and they were covered in tubes, said Lake. Over the next 8 weeks, they made slight progress, but their oxygen levels were still not favorable until their mother asked if they could be placed together. They immediately put their arms around each other and their health improved dramatically. There is no scientific explanation for what happened, although many parents of twins believe in the rescuing hug. Mrs. Lake Jason, 29, said, It was really a miracle. It was as if they knew they were together again and they were pulling each other through. It was wonderful to see. They really improved from that moment on. But to the astonishment of Mrs. Lake Jason and her husband Luke Jason, that was not the last time the twins' special bond would prove invaluable in a medical crisis. Even after a decade since their mysterious phenomenon, that special togetherness is still working medical miracles. In September last year, Ava collapsed in her mother's arms at home in Stevenage. Doctors at Addenbrooke's Hospital in Cambridge discovered she had dilated cardiomyopathy, a condition that affects the heart ability to pump blood around the body. Her situation worsened over the next few days as she went into cardiac arrest and suffered a stroke while at the Royal Brompton Hospital in London. While there, she was given 11 blood transfusions and placed on a life support machine to give her a, a chance to recover. Fortunately, she pulled through, although she still suffers for problems with her swallowing reflex and has to wear orthopedic shoes to help with her walking. But once again, the special bond between the twins has helped her make considerable strides back to good health. With her brother Austin by her side and joining in her physiotherapy, she was able to recover quickly. She pulled through and Austin was again a major help in her recovery. He joined in with her physiotherapy and held her hands as she tried to take her first steps again, said Mrs. Lake Jason. With her brother by her side, there's nothing she can't do. There may not be any scientific proof that a twin's bonds and cuddling each other can help, but I saw it with my own eyes. They were pulling each other through. If you enjoyed the video, kindly give it a thumbs up and leave a comment in the comment section down below. And don't forget to share it with others. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.